You're on. All right, great. Hi, so we're Bird Bomber. Uh, I'm Matt Feldman. This is Adam Richard, Patrick Cook, and Jason Hatchin. And Denise, in a way. So, first thing I'm going to run into from the gameplay. It's pretty simple. You fly around as a bird. You poop on cars. You can fly through power-ups and collect them. And <coughs> you earn per points by pooping on cars. And the entire game is just time-based. You start with three minutes, and the only way to lose time is uh, to crash into things and lose 45 seconds. So the two main elements of gameplay are the cars and the power-ups. Uh, in terms of power-ups, we have a 45 seconds extra on the clock, uh, a multi-poop power-up, so for the next five uh, times you poop, you shoot three out, and a score multiplier that lasts 30 seconds. And uh, these cars, we have a cop car, truck, minivan, and sedan. Those are increasing probability that will spawn. They also are decreasing value as far as points. So cop cars are pretty rare. Uh, they give you a lot of multiplier, extra points, whereas sedans are pretty common, give you the base amount of points. We have a few elements on the HUD. It's fairly minimal besides that, though. We have the poop bar, which refills in 10 seconds. Uh, it, uh, poop costs 20% of the bar, and it colors red if you're low and below 20%, you can't poop, and uh, yellow if you're in the power-up. And also when you get the power-up, it, it fills up the meter. Uh, we have a small info area that shows you the number of cars you've destroyed, your total score, the multiplier, which turns green if you have the power-up, uh, the time on the top of the screen, which turns red under 30 seconds. Uh, we have various notification texts when you gain power-ups or uh, you lose time or gain time. And then in the top right corner we have a top-down camera. So now I'm going to go over how we did it. So we used Unity 3D, which has a bit of a steep learning curve to get into. And there's a decent amount of tutorials though, so it's not that bad after you get going with it. We started with a racetrack tutorial with a you know a car that you can race with and we removed all the code from that and eventually made the car fly and then turned it into a bird and mutated from a tutorial um, until the point that we were comfortable with the structure and made our own project. It has some, some great tooling, uh, terrain editor, sound, asset managing, all that's included. But probably best is the community. Um, the IRC is very responsive. The forums are, have a ton of resources posted to them. People have posted packages. There's a Stack Overflow type question and answer website um, that pretty much hits every Google result that you need. Um, it's remarkably fast for all the different things you can throw at it. And it's mono-based. So most of our code's in C Sharp, uh, but we have a little bit of JavaScript. And what we didn't find out until a little later is that you can actually sync it up with Visual Studio for uh, code completion and other editing tools. So how do we use the Kinect? Uh, we used a project called OpenNI, natural, inter natural Interaction, for the middleware between the Kinect driver and Unity. Uh, we had a open source wrapper. Someone had already compiled the DLL and imported it into Unity and that was on GitHub, and what it does is it maps the Kinect's RGB D value, the depth and the image, into three-dimensional skeletal nodes. So the control is all done using vector algebra, and that determines your heading, roll, and when the hooping gesture. So I'm going to show you really quick. Um, I, the I, got, I got a lot of questions during game day about how we actually utilize the connect. So forgive my drawing, we don't have an artist. Um, basically, there's two vectors that determine your movement. The first one is we use these the shoulder points and the head point and make two vectors. And that creates a plane that's on your chest basically. And that plane gives you a normal vector out. So when you lean back, it goes up, and that points are on basically a giant circle. So the different points on the circle, you're going to need different x and y values. And in that way, our movement all operates off of 
variable input. It's not like key down. So if you lean back a little bit, you'll, your torque will slowly increase. Um, and for roll, what we did is we took this normal vector, and then we made a new vector that um, compared the center of your head to your collarbone. And when we took the cross product of that, we got a vector that was coming out um, this way. And so that was on a circle like this, and we just checked the y values as to where the end point of this vector was. So if you tilt your head, to one side, your vector is going to come up or down depending, and that value is going to range between negative one and one, and that's the amount of torque that we're applying. Um, additionally, um, for the squatting gesture, when you initially calibrate and you can see both of your hip joints, um, it takes that middle compared to your head, and this distance we take 10% of. So we can have different height users. And if you drop, if your hips drop by this much additionally, we trigger the, the proof as just a singular key down and key up. Can you get the screen back? All right, so how we did the cars well, actually took a while. Uh, we took the models from the SketchUp uh, asset library that Google provides. There's a bunch of models that are openly contributed to that source. We, we used SketchUp to export that to a 3DS format. And then in Autodesk 3DS Max, we ran the Pro Optimize tool, which lowered the poly count, and we merged all the meshes together. Um, and this was necessary because at their original size, Sure, you could draw one or two, but we needed to draw hundreds, and that many draw calls was entirely killing our frame rate. So we exported it to FBX, which is a pretty open uh, 3D model format, um, which Unity has a great importer for you. You can just drag and drop it into Unity, and we applied a 200 to 1 scale, which from SketchUp put this at a real world meter, and the way Unity operates, um, the physics engine operates off of what's perceived to be a real world meter. So that sized everything, everything in our game is sized pretty much to scale. And then we applied shaders by hand, so that there's reflective cube maps, so that the cars are shiny where they're supposed to be shiny and not when they're not. And it's packaged into a final prefab. And a prefab in Unity is basically um, an abstract object that you can create instances of. So from there, there's three additional prefabs. We have a parking spot prefab, which contains one of the four uh, car prefabs that we just made. Um, and they, when those spawn, they report up to the car factory. Then for convenience, we have a car row spawner, which consists of a single spot that you place on the map, and you can rotate it into position and give it a uh, variable end of how many cars you want it to spawn in a row, and it spaces them out and spawns them along the line accordingly. And finally, we have the car factory, which contains a list of all the cars and maintains a list of empty spots, and it's, it's in control of a lot. It's in control of spawning the cars, choosing the ones to spawn, uh, coloring them when they spawn, and going into the materials and changing that. It handles uh, collision with as far as which cars to report in a radius. Uh, when you group on them, and it also handles from those cars, how does that contribute to your score? So, um, sorry about that. Um, we had some issue in optimizing this because uh, you might have seen in game day, we have some lights on the cop cars. <coughs> This is because there's a few different ways of rendering light. This is forward, dynamic, forward rendering with dynamic batching. And what that means is that every cop car, it goes through, calculates the geometry, calculates the light, and then calculates the pixels that it, it's rendering. And 
the batching part of it is that it recognizes, hey, I've seen this geometry before, I can draw these in a batch. So for example, all the parking spots are the same exact material, so they can be executed in one batch draw call. So already we're at 900 cars, and with forward, uh, with forward lighting, we're down at eight frames a second, and we really didn't know how many cars we were gonna need, but after about 300 of them, we're already down to an unplayable frame rate, and this is a fixed camera, nothing else in the level, and the Kinect itself um, is a pretty heavy calculation because it's calculated every frame. So it, 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 this test is of 1,500 cars, and it pretty much slows to a crawl. So the next type of light, the next type of rendering is deferred rendering, and that's unfortunately only a feature of Unity Pro, which was kind of a limitation because it's about $1,500, and um, it works great, um, and it's used in games like Stalker and some of the new games like Battlefield 3, and what the, the way that works is it calculates only per pixel on the screen what the light influence is. So that allows you to have, right here we have over a thousand lights running, and it's running pretty smoothly at about 30 frames a second. So that, and along with the models, were what we needed to do to optimize the, optimize the <coughs> frame rate. There's some art and ambience in the game. Uh, I wrote a cloud engine that spawns uh, clouds randomly in clusters that blend into the skybox. And this is uh, building off the work of someone on the forums who had written a uh, really nice shader for, blend, for the blending modes. And you can see in this video that <coughs> some of the clouds are not like the others. They kind of just blend in. And while it wasn't directly a feature of the game, uh, it was one of the things that we added to make the game a little more solid and less hey, you're just in a green box flying around. And so you can see here, uh, some of the, these clouds right here are actually in a 2D skybox, and the cloud that the bird's about to fly through is actually a particle effect. And they render in both the overhead camera and the main camera. Additionally, we did some research into different types of terrain. Um, you might have seen in game day, we kept it pretty simple just for, for game day, but we definitely put a lot of effort into building up the rest of the level. We went from researching really realistic terrain with grass and trees to uh, a custom shader that like cell shaded tune outline across all the hills and a thick black outline and then we basically decided to do neither of them. And I'm going to show you one of the reasons why um, with a stress test from the realism aspect. Uh, basically, the way the trees work, uh, they're 2D sprites which are billboarded, which means they constantly face the player, and then they're also 3D meshes, which exist in 3D and you can fly around them. And so, one of the issues you run into is popping in between this 2D and 3D, and if you want to run everything in 3D, sure, it looks great, but then you run into frame rate issues. So, this test has nothing else in it, and it's just about the bare minimum on my desktop machine uh, that runs at a smooth frame rate. But you can see trees popping in and out of existence, and um, granted there are about 500,000 trees um, in this test, it's the same case uh, in a smaller test. So what we didn't get to, we plan on doing a lot more level detail. We ended up, we started from a Google SketchUp or a Google Maps picture into SketchUp and built up the map from there and placed the car spots on actual car spots. And there was, you know, little uh, islands and trees and grass and other things in the parking lot and we wanted to detail the rest of that. We didn't get to it. Um, we could always use more optimization. The game's running at a playable frame rate, but if we want to add more, we're going to have to go back in, add some level of detail optimization to the different models and whatnot. We could use more power-ups, and uh, we could definitely use more levels. And because the Kinect drivers are open source, they actually had three revisions 
while we were working on the project. And in later revisions, implementing gestures has become easier, and we would have liked to have made the gesture support a little more official as to the way it's done on the Xbox, and that's included in the later drivers, but we wanted to stick on the original set of drivers that we had working, and of course, AI. So with that, we're gonna go to a demo. You can, uh, any, anyone have questions? If not, you can ask while I'm playing, going through the demo. All right, so our menu's in 3D, and you can click on high score and whatnot, and it rotates you through the, the map. Here's our high score, 66,000. I'm not going to be able to beat that right now. So we have some music and um, audio. And you can see this is the top-down camera, your group bar, and the income area. So we, we enabled a, and to our best ability, calibrated the keyboard controls for testing since we all don't have a connect. And you can see the poop meter go down as we shoot things. Uh, I'll try to get this power up and I'll miss. Um, and we have sounds. We have a, our sound. We have a 3D sound engine. Um, the explosion sounds are done logarithmically from distance, and um, the fart noise is actually randomized um, each each go. So it's just a little more playful. Um, and we have colliders on uh, the ground and the building. So if you run into them, you lose 45 seconds and start back over again. Um, additionally, there's uh, another gesture that we added for uh, of speed boost, which is simply just put your arms up and down and it just tracks that it. it's gone up and down. And we, you can spam that in the uh, dev mode. So with that, I'll pause this. And any questions? If you were to add AI, then uh, what would you do with it? Well, one of the thoughts we originally had was to make the parking lot a little more realistic in that cars would drive around it, find spaces, park in them, maybe even people would walk out of the stores. Um, but as it was, we needed the cars to be static so that their draw calls could be batched. And uh, about halfway through the project, we, we decided to completely put that off the table as we just you know, we're overwhelmed with the amount of work that needed to be done still. I saw there was a multiple time power-ups. Could you, do those respawn? Yes, power-ups respawn. And you, if, if, you're, if you're good at flying, the game is tuned to play with the Kinect. So when you're playing with the keyboard, it's pretty easy to just go straight through a bunch of power-ups and play forever and just keep getting time power-ups because they, the odds are they're probably going to find enough of them to uh, get them faster than you lose time. The adding additional layers, you know, additional levels of play, I assume would be pretty straightforward. Sure. Um, <laughs> with Unity, everything is modular, um, and you can literally just create an event script that runs on update, and drag it onto the player we have multiple scripts, different files. Um, for this demo, we just removed our connect handler um, so it would run smoothly on, on the keyboard. And it's just a matter of swapping scripts and behaviors in, um, on and off game objects. So when, you know, like you got the high score of 60,000, roughly, um, was that just based upon the set of cars that were there? Because the cars are being destroyed, right? When they're being pooped on? Yeah, they also respond. And they, and they respond, respond okay. They respond with, a frequency like, um, I believe the cop cars are about a 5%, uh, and then you go 20, 30, and um, we've played around with the different percents, and they've been tweaked a number of times. Um, basically, we wanted to keep the number of cop cars low because we ended up using the forward lighting. And as you saw in the optimization video, that can become, if, if all of those cars, you know, half of them were cop cars, uh, you'd probably lose a good 10, 10 frames a second just rendering their lights. So it'd be it'd be pretty easy to switch it so that you could not not have the car spawn, 
wipe out all the cars on a level and have a new level generated. And yeah, I think that would be a comment and a line of code and a couple lines of code, but it would be pretty easy to do. It wouldn't be anything, um, wouldn't use any of the aspects of Unity that we didn't use uh, in its current implementation. Okay. As it is, the we actually have three levels, the main menu level, the game over level, and the main level, so it would just be as easy as <coughs> copy and pasting and adding another level and calling level four. Yeah, because yeah, you know, I guess the way you could sort of structure that might be you know, when you start the game, you have to, for a given parking lot, have to wipe out like 50% of the cars or something, and, and then you can go to a new level, and each level you've got to get a higher percentage of the vehicles that are on that level. Uh, one of our original ideas, and we saw in a tech demo, was we could have a level that was, you fly along a highway, and, you know, we have cars changing lanes and whatnot, but then we need to, that would involve a lot more in, in terms of, well, AI as well as uh, on the rendering end to be able to batch load new terrain in ahead of you and behind you as far as you can see while keeping the memory consumption down. Right. And so that's why we opted for this static um, that's about a 2,000 meter level. Other questions? Are there a multiple two times four power ups on the level at the same time? Yeah, the, the power ups are completely random, uh, but they all all that getting another time power up will do is reset your your time left up to to thirty. Mm -hmm. um, when working with the connect, you, uh, is the connect able to uh, track multiple people at the same time? It is, um, and the wrapper supports it to some extent. Um, the calibration, uh, we have a pose uh, for calibration, it's, it's pretty standard. Um, it takes a while to calibrate and in the, the, the Connect itself and the open drivers are very capable of that. Um, in terms of the wrapper and what we were, had access to, um, it, it would hurt a little bit to do that, but it's certainly possible. The reason I asked was just wondering, did you ever think about any sort of multiplayer? I mean, not not in terms of what you're going to do now, but like, you, what you want. Any well, I mean, we actually, we considered multiplayer um, in, in terms of this game, mm -hmm. um, but in, in our, you know, in our apartments and whatnot testing it, mm -hmm. we had to make special areas, you know, just to play, and there was, you know, there's no room to flap around with other people, mm -hmm. and uh, we knew we, our space was going to be somewhat limited on game day, too, so. Just for simplicity, we opted for to completely ignore that case. Oh. Uh, how far can you fly like, away from the main part of the level? You can fly infinitely far away from the main level. So if somebody left it Well, as, sorry, as far as you can fly in, in, in terms of three minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would you always still be, if you turn it around, would you always still be able to see the parking lot? Um, there is a maximum distance of 5,000 where the camera that's on the bird clicks. So if you flew more than 5,000 meters away um, and then turned around, you probably just see empty skybox until you came within 5,000 meters again, and then it would start uh, clipping the camera. And that's just for uh, reducing the amount of draws that are on the camera at a given time. Any others? Okay, let's thank them.